Coming up today for the Cardinals of Louisville, it's Big East regular season conference home game number two. Trying to protect the top ten ranking against a streaking team, Panthers of Pitt, undefeated in 13 games. The University of Pittsburgh with Carl Krauser as the front man picked near the middle of the Big East pack. But the Panthers have clawed their way to a 13-0 start heading into the unfriendly confines of Freedom Hall. Louisville and head coach Rick Pitino, their conference newcomers, but no stranger to big games. The Cardinals prepare to defend their home turf in what's sure to be a Big East classic. It's number 11 Pittsburgh, number 10 Louisville, and it's next. to Louisville, Kentucky inside historic Freedom Hall getting set for what should be a terrific matchup on this Sunday afternoon. Second Big East regular season home game for the Cardinals. They are one and one in conference play. Pitt off to a tremendous start. Undefeated in the conference. Undefeated on the season. They have run off 13 victories in a row and we welcome you inside everyone. Along with Charles Davis, I'm John Sanders. Missing in action at least to the start of the game for the Cardinals again today. Taekwon Dean. It's an ankle injury and he did not play against UC Davis. Obviously will not start today. We do expect to see him later on. We'll see how he does when he gets on the floor. Andre McGee will start for him. Brandon Jenkins picked up the scoring slack against Davis, 31 points. So we'll see if that gives even Carl Krauser a little more free reign in this game this afternoon, but we're going to look inside for a terrific matchup of two big men. Two mastodons meeting in the lane. Should be a lot of fun for Pittsburgh. Aaron Gray has really developed. His eight double-doubles leads the Big East. 20 points, 12 rebounds, five block shots in their last win against DePaul. David Padgett, much more of a thoroughbred type. Gets up and down the floor, knows how to play the game, knows how to pass it. That's going to be a great matchup. Yeah, it will be fun. Can the Cardinals cool off the streaking Panthers or will Pitt's win streak run to 14? We'll find out starting right now. I'm a Mecca Okafor, college graduate, Charlotte Bobcat, and proud recipient of the Aeropostale Big E Scholar Athlete of the Year. Graduating with a 3.76 GPA and a degree in finance in three years, I balance books and basketball. Aeropostale gives out more than $300,000 in scholarships to both students and student athletes. It wasn't and still isn't all about the rebounds. Today's Big East game is brought to you by Hyundai with quality that lets them offer America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Advance Auto Parts, for the best parts, people, and prices, we're ready in advance. And by Guinness Draft Stout, drink responsibly, brilliant. Welcome back to our Big East basketball game on this Sunday afternoon. We are in Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. Gray, Kendall, DeGroat, Krauser, and Ramon, not much change there. The one change, of course, for Louisville, and Charles talked about it. Andre McGee, who came up big for them in the win at Providence, their one conference victory, gets the start in place of Taekwon Dean. So it should be a fun afternoon. Let's take a look now at our Pontiac game-changing performer. It is brought to you by Pontiac and Juan Palacios. The coaching staff wants to see him use his big frame more in the low post. Last three games, not much production on the offensive end. In fact, he has not made a three-point basket in those three games, and that is one of the strengths of his, of his ball game. Tom Lopes, the referee with the opening tip. He's assisted by Ed Hightower and Gary Prager. And the Panthers control. Kendall is outside. This is DeGroat, one of two seniors on the team. Aaron Gray, 7'2", 270, one of the more improved players in the conference. That's a three. Rims out. Nice rebound brought down by Terrence Williams. 
Louisville out man to man to start things off. Don't be surprised if you see a variety of defenses from the Cardinals today. Lots of mixing between man to man zones and picking up full court. Krauser jumps out on McGee, keeps his dribble, now gives it up to Williams. And inside to Padgett. The transfer backs down Gray, hooks it over him, and misses the shot. Sneaking in for the rebound is Ramon. Surprise, surprise, one of the keys to this ball game, rebounding. Which team can get on the glass and control it? Rick Pitino has identified it as a big area for his team. Jamie Dixon not happy his team was out rebounding against DePaul in their last outing. Yeah, here's another matchup inside, and they reverse it to Kendall. He gets the basket and draws the foul. Good look by Gray to feed Levon Kendall. And Kendall has been bothered a little bit by some back problems. Talked to him before the game, and he said it's fine. In this play, Aaron Gray, the double team came a little late from Juan Palacios. What Louisville's going to want to do is come at Aaron Gray from a variety of ankles, angles to try and get him to give up the basketball. In that situation, he had an easy look delivered, and they convert for a three-point play. Panthers scoring first. This is Palacios outside. Palacios gives it up to Padgett. Transfer from Kansas, the University of Kansas. He's out of Reno, Nevada. And they switch it, and the foul is on Aaron Gray. Oh, and that's what Jamie Dixon does not want to see his big man pick up that far from the basket, just trying to show himself on defense to slow up the dribbler. Instead, he picks up a cheap foul early. And look at Andre McGee's numbers. Panthers have the first three of the afternoon. Backdoor play. Palacios goes up and misses the shot. Crowds with the rebound. Here's Gray against Padgett. He works on a jump hook and comes up short. Rebound brought out of there by Brandon Jenkins. You look at this 14-player roster for U of L, and half of them, seven of the players, are new to Rick Pitino's program. Which has slowed down the development of Louisville because Rick Pitino is so used to having all of his offense and defense implemented at this point of the season. Still working on adding to the playbook. Kicking for the three, and he got it. Williams. 34% three-point shooter ties the ball game. And as soon as they make a basket, they jump into the full-court pressure, which has been Rick Pitino's trademark wherever he's coached. Runner by Krauser. Too strong, but there's Gray with a putback, and he draws the foul. Foul from behind, and it's a quick two fouls now on Terrence Williams. Love the ball movement. Brandon Jenkins gets into the lane where, as you noticed, as he kicked it out to the right side, John, all five guys in blue shirts were in the lane. One of the things that Pitt likes to do is control that painted area. They want you to kick it out wide. Terrence Williams made them pay on that possession. Gray, a 66% free throw shooter. He misses the first of his two. And two quick fouls, as we mentioned, on the freshman from Seattle, Washington. He missed them both, but Kendall gets it back. For Pitt, then it's taken away. Nice reaction by Williams to get the ball back. Palacios inside Padgett tried to make the feed. It's deflected and picked up by Pittsburgh. Teammate breaking down the lane. He just couldn't hit him. Ramon's three-pointer on the way. A little short. And on the rebound, crashing the boards was John DeGroat for Pitt, and he will pick up a foul. Head coach Rick Pitino back in the Big East Conference. This is his fifth season at the helm. Took his team to the Final Four last year. And, of course, you look around, he's had great success every place he's been. Starting with Boston University, his first head coaching job, he's won everywhere he's been in terms of college basketball. And people might forget that he was an assistant under Jim Beheim at Syracuse. Actually got the job on his honeymoon after he and his wife Joanne had gotten married. Received word that he was going to be an assistant for Coach Jim Beheim. Palacios along the baseline, kicks it back. Williams for three, got it. He's got both three-pointers this afternoon for the Cardinals. And made baskets means pressure coming from the Louisville Cardinals. They want this to be much more of an open court, up and down game. Their idea is if they can get it into the 80s or 90s, that's their best opportunity to win. They fall back into a 2-3 zone. Tell you what, these folks in Freedom Hall can make some noise, can't they? Yes, they can. Doesn't matter what day of the week, Sunday afternoon, straight from church, right to their true religion, basketball uh, exactly. at the University of Louisville. 
That's an offensive foul. DeGroat will pick up his second foul. And the Panthers will have to make a change heading to the court is Keith Benjamin. So DeGroat will sit and Benjamin comes on. 6-3. Louisville on a pair of three-pointers by Terrence Williams has the lead. Of course, last year they averaged 18,746 in this building. That was fourth in the nation in attendance. See, I'm betting we're going to see 20,000 plus tonight as we get another turnover. I believe that's the second against the Louisville Cardinals. But again, back into their full court pressure. Don't expect a lot of steals and deflections and things of this of that nature right now. They're hoping it becomes attrition, John. Through the course of 40 minutes, they're going to try and wear down the Pitt Panthers and their ball handlers. Carl Krauser gets it, and he tried to go low again. Third turnover for the Panthers of Pitt. 6-3 is our score. We mentioned the former ties for Rick Pitino to the Big East Conference. Well, there is definitely a tie because he was a coach in this conference way back when. We'll talk about that when we come back. More Big East basketball from ESPN Plus in Louisville. If you're looking for answers from an auto parts store, get ready. Advance Auto Parts is working hard. You month your get for fighters. And the courage oh, and this is regal using this now sending pictures is so much easier. this real when her mom died you know sometimes dad is the last person a teenager wants to talk to carrie Cardinals lead the Panthers by three. We mentioned Rick Pitino's ties. Well, you'd go back when? 85 to 87, head coach at Providence College. 142, lost 23. First year he went to the NIT, and then also in 1987 under Pitino. Billy Donovan leading the way. They advanced to the Final Four. And he returned to Providence for a game on January 7th, and he got a standing ovation. They remember him well at PC. As well they should. And one of the things that Coach Patino said after the standing ovation was how touched and heartened he was by getting that. Because as you and I both know, John, and anyone who follows college basketball, he didn't get the same reception when he went back to <laughs> That's Kentucky. That's true, he did not. And frankly, that hurt him a bit because he, didn't, he expected people to remember the good times, not the fact that he was at their rival now. Long range three again. This time it's Andre McGee, the freshman from California. Hits a three pointer. He's a 37% shooter, and it's all three so far for a six point lead. And the pressure is working already. A little shaky ball handling by Pittsburgh in the backcourt after the made bucket by Andre McGee. One of the keys to this game can Louisville hit the three ball with the proficiency that we're used to seeing from them? They feel like they have to win that battle against Pittsburgh today, who defends it the worst in the Big East. The freshman turns it over. Young just into the lineup, number 23, and it's the fourth hit turnover. And there's Jamie Dixon. What an outstanding job. You talk about getting off to a great start as a head coach. How about an 821 winning percentage? Do you know he's number one in the NCAA in winning percentage under act for active coaches? I'd say that's a pretty good start to your coaching career. Well, since he's never lost a game in December, it's <laughs> probably easy to figure. There's the difference in turnovers, four to two. Palacios looks inside and takes it down the lane. Goes back to Padgett. Goes around the big man and lays it off the glass and in. I like nice what move. David Padgett did there, John. Sorry about that. Love what he did because he decided to use his quickness against Aaron Gray. Had some space, put the ball on the floor, and carried it to the basket. Gray gets inside and off the feed from Benjamin. Gets his first field goal. Gray has the steal. It went through his hands and it kicked right to his teammate. Turnover number three for the Cardinals. Krauser penetrates. Bending, bending, out. No good. And it is before the shot was taken, the foul was called. Foul will go on McGee. And let's talk about these big men again. But watch, see where David Padgett has some space about 12 feet from the hoop. That's when he used his basketball IQ and put it on the floor and used his quickness to go against Aaron Gray. But Aaron Gray runs the floor better than he gets credit for. Beats them down court and is in position before David Padgett could get back 
and he carries it to the basket for a hoop himself. Well, as promised, Taekwon Dean did not start, but he's on the court right now. And Panthers have made some changes, too, as LeVance Fields has checked into the lineup. And if I'm Pittsburgh, I test him right away on the defensive end. See how he does trying to guard someone. Carl Krauser does exactly that. And that's a first step travel. Turnover number five. Second turnover in a row on Young. Right now, the Panthers of Pitt are playing with three freshmen on the court. They have bigs out there along with Young and along with Fields. So three freshmen out there. You see Taekwon Dean not moving with his normal proficiency right now. LeVance Fields gets the task of checking him right, uh, right off the top. Young with a rebound. You can see Dean's left ankle is heavily taped, and he's running gingerly. Krauser gets it up and now has to turn it back out. Good defense. Good job on that side by Brandon Jenkins. And they're going to try and hide Taekwon Dean to an extent in their man-to-man -man by having him guard someone who's not a score. But on the switch, he has to pick up Carl Krauser. Biggs looks for help. Then powers his way inside. Has it blocked by Padgett. They get it back to Benjamin. His jumper. Good. Nice job by Keith Benjamin hopping on the loose ball and hitting the short jumper over the big man. And Padgett traveled. He could not get his feet set as he was trying to get control of the basketball, so they turn it back over. What he's trying to say is he felt like he was pushed on his move trying to get to the basketball knocked him off balance. Eight-point lead is down to four as the Panthers claw their way back. See, right now from Carl Krauser, I'm checking Taekwon Dean. See if he can stay with me if he's going to guard me in the man-to-man, -man, but it's a 2-3 zone for right. Louisville instead. Well, these are two teams a similar situation lately after that exciting victory over Notre Dame the Panthers had about a week off and were a little sluggish at the start against DePaul and the Cardinals have not played since they beat UC Davis last week so they've had six days off it will be Cardinal basketball yeah, those six days off probably did come at a good time for Louisville, though, because they had just completed a three-game and five-day span, the third time they had done so already in this young season. So into the lineup now for the Cardinals is Terrence Farley. Millard is also playing as well. He's the guy that got hurt in practice last week. He didn't play against UC Davis because of an illness, and then he took a shot in the mouth. He loosened his teeth the other day, and that's going to be on Krauser. They're going to have to be careful with Carl Krauser. And need him on the floor. You did the you did the Pittsburgh Notre Dame game where he fouled out with about two minutes to go in regulation. But the young kids carried him home in double overtime in that game. But as you and I both know, and everyone else who follows basketball, fits much better with Carl Krauser on the floor. He knocks that one out of bounds, knocks it away from Millard. Well, he's lost some weight, about 13 to 15 pounds. And they're going to reset the shot clock, I think. As we look at Millard, that elbow he took was in practice from David Padgett. And they had to actually go in and do surgery and reset his teeth. He's wearing braces. I talked to him before the game. I said, how do you feel? And he said, just looked at me and said one word, awful. Well, so we'll see how much you can give him today. McGee's gotten off to a great start. Palacios with a move. Missed the shot. Got himself in good position. Ahead, it's Young with a stop. Great feed from Krauser. And the freshman from Clinton, Maryland, Makes it a two-point ball game. And you and I were talking before the game. We talked about how Louisville wants to make this an open court game. And you mentioned Pittsburgh doesn't mind running either. No, Krauser, Krauser will get it up Fields. and down. So will Fields, yes. They, they can get up and go, too. And Sam Young, with his athleticism, beat everyone down court for the hoop. McGee off the screen. Goes inside and turns it over. They can get, those, they can get good minutes out of Tyrell Biggs, which they're getting already. That just makes Aaron Gray that much more effective when he returns after a rest. Krauser for the lead. The rebound brought out of there by Terrence Farley. Cardinals have it back, leading by two. 11 and a half to go in the first half. A lot of turnovers, but not too many fouls so far. Dean into traffic. Almost taken away that time by Benjamin. This is Palacios. No place to go. Now McGee. This is a three-pointer. Good. He rattled it in. Juan Palacios, a 33% three-point shooter, and that's the fourth tray here in the first half. And Palacios' his first triple in his last four ball games. I watched him knock down four against Miami down in the uh, Orange Bowl Classic. He's the MVP of that game. But since that time, has struggled shooting the three ball. 
for Pittsburgh, four for four right for now. the Cardinals, and uh, the Panthers don't have any. The losses came at Kentucky and here to Villanova for Louisville. The Panthers yet to lose. Fields, Benjamin passes on the three, puts up a shorter jumper, and it rattles out. Tyquan Dean taken down underneath the basket, but he gets up and comes back. Palacios looking for another and got it. He's feeling it right now. Two in a row for Palacios. And a 30-second timeout called by Pitt. They have cut it to two points and then two quick threes and right back to eight-point lead. And the Louisville staff has been talking to Juan Palacios about using his 6'9", 250-pound frame more on the low block. But this is where the big guy kind of earns his keep. He can go out on the perimeter and drain triples. He hasn't done that much lately. But today, getting off the schneid, back-to-back three-point shots, and he's ignited the Louisville Cardinals. They have 614 career victories in this building. Over 50 seasons of college basketball at Freedom Hall. You know, we saw that, that, that shot of Rick Pitino in Providence going to the Final Four with Billy Donovan, now the head coach of Florida, who's undefeated That's by the right. way. He's protege. doing a pretty good job. That game was played right here in Freedom Hall when they beat Georgetown to go to the Final Four. A lot of history here for Rick Pitino before he arrived on campus. Here's Fields. This makes a 2-3 zone that much more effective playing from the front for Louisville. Graves has checked in now for Pitt. They will play 10 guys. Trouser for three from straight away. Comes up short. Rebound ripped down by Palacios. He's doing it at both ends right now. Here's McGee running back. They look inside to Padgett. He's got space, no one doubling him. But Lewis lost control of it. Gets timeout. Great defense by Aaron Grace, staying down on the move by Padgett and blocking his access to the baseline. He had no place to go with the ball. Nowhere to go. That's terrific defense by Aaron Gray. But it's still an eight-point lead in this game. Midway through the first half, we have 9.45 to play. More great Big East action coming your way on Saturday from ESPN+. Plus. The 11th-ranked Panthers will be in Madison Square Garden. Take on the Red Storm of St. John's Big East Basketball on ESPN+. Plus. Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Check your local listings. A quick observation on this game, John, is that Louisville is playing at the pace they want to play. They get the tempos going the way they want it to go, and because they're making their three-point shots, and Pitt is not countering with three-point shots, that allows Rick Pitino to pressure full court, fall back into the 2-3 zone, because he's not having to guard the perimeter as much right now. If Pittsburgh starts making threes, look for Louisville to go to maybe a 3-2 zone to try and get out on the three line and guard the shooters a bit more. Padgett again against Gray. Same move as before, but fouled before he got there. That'll be number two on Aaron Gray. That's going to bring Biggs back into the lineup. And it'll take us to a timeout with 9.37 to play from Louisville, Kentucky. It's the Cardinals leading the Panthers 17 to 9. Before you go here. Brilliant! The spoon, brilliant! Ouch. For more bloopers, go to Guinness.com. Please drink responsibly. Cardinals have the lead, 17 to 9. Let's take a look at the three-point shooting so far. Been quite terrific for the Louisville Cardinals coming out of the gate. They're five for five from the bonus sphere. As Terrence Williams knocking down one of his two, Andre McGee getting the start today for Taekwon Dean. He drains one. Then Juan Palacios from the low block looks outside and finds another open shooter, Terrence Williams. Five for five to start off with. But how about shooting the regular two ball? One for six is Louisville. And obviously limping is Dean as he had the ball taken away by Fields, and he really couldn't break the chasing down. Now, frankly, I'm wondering how long Taekwon Dean can go today. 
because it's, they're going to be plays, not just the chasing down, but the hesitancy in making that move, planning on the ankle, putting full pressure on it. I'm not sure how long he can go in a pressure situation. Foul will be on Kendall. He went up with the left hand, trying to block the shot by Williams. And one thing about Taekwon Dean, he's a gamer. I mean, you talk about a guy who comes ready to play and wanting to play, but just as you pointed out, John, once the steal was made, no way could he hustle back to try and prevent the basket. But to me, it's more than just that. It's, it's being able to react to the basketball, go and meet a pass, come down hard in the two, you know, the, the jump stop. And he's going out of the game right now. I'm not sure if it's ankle as much as, you know, just the idea they need to get someone out there. Someone's a little more mobile. Yes. They're going to run the up-tempo type offense and defense. They're going to need some legs. Listen, if it were all heart, he'd be out there for Absolutely. all 40 minutes. That's not the issue. And normally when Fields is on, he will run the point, and then Krauser moves off into the two-guard spot. Here comes Graves down the lane, goes back to Krauser. He kicks to Fields. He launches a three and hits it. That's a big shot right there because he had to get that over Juan Palacios running at him from a wing in the 2-3 zone. High arc finds the bottom of the net. First three-pointer of the afternoon for the Panthers. They are back within four. Feet underneath to Palacios and misses the layup. Kendall has the rebound. Back comes Krauser. Cut off nicely. Good defense by McGee that time. That pass is deflected and tracked down and then lost. Terrence Williams followed that ball all over the court and couldn't quite get to it. Louisville awfully quick and active in their 2-3 zone. A few deflections here early in the ball game, getting their hands into the passing lanes. Graves departs. Ramon returns. And Millard is back in with Palacios going to the bench. So both teams rotating their players. Fields out there to run the show right now for Pitt. Goes back to Krauser. That's how quickly they close out on him on the perimeter. Yeah, they understand he's a 42% three-point shooter. That was Ramon a travel. Shuffled, yes. Six turnovers now for Pitt. Well, let's take a look at the freshman, Levance Fields. He got a two earlier, and he gets the first three-point shot of the afternoon for Pitt. They're still down four with just under eight minutes to play in the half. What's better than our biggest, most irresistible emotion? For great taste with calcium, the only way to go is up. The Cardinals have led most of this first half. The Panthers are back to within four right now with 7.59 to go. Let's take a look, an advanced look at upcoming games brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. And this is a pretty tough stretch right now for Pitt because they've got to play at Rutgers, at St. John's, and then they have to go home and play Syracuse. It's not an there's no easy road anywhere. No easy road anywhere, and a lot of that is due to the fact that they've been on television. The TV helps set the schedule, and what I liked was Jamie Dixon's attitude about it. Everybody says, oh, what a tough stretch. He said, you know something? We're going to be on TV. That's great for the university. We'll handle it. Good pass inside that time to Padgett. Gets his second field goal. Backs the lead up to six. Pittsburgh got the first three points on an old-fashioned three-point play. I leave on Kendall, but ever since then it has been primarily the Cardinals in front. Fields off the bench with five to lead the scoring. Ramona almost traveled again. Twice. <laughs> Shot clock at 11. Good defense by the Cardinals. Ramon's three rims out. Battle and Biggs battling along there. Gets the rebound, gets it again, and is finally fouled. Oh, what a great effort by the freshman 
Tyrell Biggs. Tremendous effort because Louisville closed out well on the shooter. And Biggs was inside battling. First, it was a one-on-one -on -one rebound. Watch. Biggs gets inside, takes it from Millard. But then watch how Louisville triples him here. There's Millard, excuse me, they double Millard and Padgett. And then he goes up again. Now there are three guys around him. And he powers up and goes to the free throw line. Now Millard, of course. Watch Miller, 22. He gets swiped again and yeah. right in the mouth where he just had the oral surgery. We had teeth loosened, had to be tightened up again. Actually had a fracture in the area that holds your teeth. And as I mentioned before the game, he told me he felt awful, but what a gamer he is, playing with a mouthpiece. And you know something? We'll see him again, John. He's yeah. going to let that settle, and he'll come back in. He's a tough guy. There are plenty of injuries to look at. Palacios playing with some ankle problems. We've chronicled Dean as the Cardinals took it, turn it over. At seven turnovers now for Louisville. They have Brandon Jenkins going down the lane, not looking for the ball. Padgett thought he would be, tried to deliver it. Kendall skips, fields for three. On target, that's his second three-pointer. What a spark it's been for this young man, the freshman from Brooklyn off the bench. It's a two-point game. He's played well all year long, but think back to the DePaul game. They helped put that game away with a 13-3 run. Fields had six points during that time. Williams from outside, that's off the mark. Ramon tracks it down for Pitt. Back come the Panthers, down by two. Trouser, Kendall. No place to go. Browser works off the screen, penetrates, puts up a runner, bending off, the rebound, Padgett, he's pulled down by Krauser. That'll be number two on Carl Krauser, and he just yanked him to the floor. He, get, he got the screen he wanted. He called for the screen from Kendall, gets to the basket, unable to convert as Palacios meets him at the rim. Nice, strong, aggressive rebound by David Padgett as he gets to be more and more comfortable with this ball club. And remember, Padgett didn't play last year. He was a transfer, had to sit out. It takes time to knock a little rust off of your game, but David Padgett is really starting to flow, and he's one of the leaders of this Louisville Cardinal team. And already in the one-and-one one with 6-10 to go in the half. And this is a guy who's hit 21 straight free throws. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. <laughs> did I put that, that put the whammy on him? No, apparently not. He's, he's impervious to the pressure of the straight. That's 22 straight for David Padgett. And an 88% shooter overall as Krauser with two fouls has to go to the bench. See, when your big guy can handle the ball and you're not worried about him getting fouled and going to the free throw line, you can leave him on the floor in key situations down the stretch. Now that ends that streak. We'll bring you no, no, first no, 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 he made the first one. <laughs> well, the streak ended after the first one. <laughs> I didn't talk about it on the second one. Yeah. Taekwondo Dean back on the floor, too, trying to guard LeVance Fields. This is Ramon, shot clock at 10. Good defense for most of this half. Young at the foul line. Lined up a runner, Kendall, with a foul will go to the line. Levon Kendall was fouled. Foul goes on Williams. Excuse me, it's on Jenkins. What's really helped Pitt in this first half, because the defense has been terrific for Louisville, but it's been Pittsburgh going to the offensive glass creating second-chance opportunities. Well, it's one of the things they do best. They have a terrific edge in the rebounding totals. That was their sixth offensive rebound of the first half. So when you're able to get to the glass, even though you're missing shots, get that second chance. Either you're getting the putback or you're getting to the free throw line, as Levon Kendall is doing right now. And he hits a pair. So he's three for three at the line. Levon has five points, and it's a one-point game. Look at that difference in the offensive board. And, and right now, the game difference, only one point. That's what's kept Pittsburgh right in it. Padgett against Kendall. Comes back to Jenkins. He dances to a jump stop, but missed the shot. Kendall has the rebound. Nice rebound by Levon Kendall, showing some toughness in there. Picking up the slap with Aaron Gray and Tyrell Biggs on the bench right now. Kendall moving to the five. And also Carl Krauser on the bench right now. So Gray and Krauser, which provide a lot of the offense, are not in there. And the Panthers are down by just one. Five to go in the half. Shot clock at 12. Here's Steele. Air balls at three. That was a tough shot. Tough one. Got a little body on the count on the play. No foul call by the officials. That one rattles out and back in. As Brandon Jenkins, who had a huge game against UC Davis, 
he really helped him with 31 points a career ball game and he stretches it back to a four-point lead yeah, he hit seven of nine three-point shots in that game that's the ball game Taekwon Dean did not play at all and Dean is really trying to gut it out but he's limping noticeably on the floor right now the zone helping him on defense off the feed young who was flat on the court in the middle of the lane got up got the ball and scored and he took the hit bounced right back up Sam young showing some toughness 24 22 and once again Taekwon Dean walking very gingerly he's almost skipping up the court they're trying to keep the pressure off of that left ankle still able to deliver the pass that led to the three-point shot by Brandon Jenkins it hurts a little bit but he's trying to play through it it's tough though yeah, it, just, it just affects you in so many ways on the floor two-point ball game and today's game is brought to you by the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority the best seats for every event no tickets required it only happens in one place only Vegas pretty good start to this game it's got a nice flow to it doesn't it good the thing I'm playing the way they want to Pittsburgh hanging tough I just wonder how much the foul situation is going to play into this game before we're done this afternoon well it, it'll if it does it plays into it in key places for Pittsburgh because as you pointed out John they go 10 deep you know they for them at the guard position Ramon and Fields kind of split that spot you know you go to the forward position to grow Benjamin Sam Young can come in and play in that spot so they have a number of bodies but you're worried about an Aaron Gray being in foul trouble because of what you have to work with against David Padgett well both he and Krauser with two Louisville has committed just five here in the first half and we're nearing the four minute mark handling the ball is Jenkins gets himself in the air and throws it to the pit bench Great job on that play by Sam Young coming out and taking away the passing lane that they thought they had to David Padgett on the drive. That yeah. is eight turnovers in the first half, and they averaged 13 a game. Yeah, Padgett had set the screen and it slid towards the basket. Sam Young took that away, and that meant Jenkins had to go elsewhere. Unfortunately, the guy in the third row doesn't help you on offense. Fields turns it over. Palacios, Benjamin cuts him off, and he travels. So Palacios trying to run the court at 6 8 did not get the job done another turnover. It's 24 22 Cardinals lead the Panthers here in Louisville. We'll be back. One car was ranked most of them. Up, it's the Cardinals by two. Let's take a look at our Hyundai cool facts. We talked about back when Rick Pitino was coaching in the Big East Conference. And you see who else was there? Jim O'Brien was in his first season at Boston College. And believe it or not, Jim Calhoun was in his first season at the University of Connecticut. Big John Thompson was there. Paul Evans, Louis Karnasek is still around. That is our Hyundai cool fact. I'm John Sanders with Charles Davis. And we are three minutes and 51 seconds away from halftime. Panthers have a chance to tie or maybe take the lead. Well, Fields has done a good job running the offense in the absence of Carl Krauser, who went out with a couple of fouls. Antonio Graves and Benjamin. Keith Benjamin in there right now. And as expected, we've seen a lot of different players for the Pitt Panthers. Graves will shoot a three for the lead. Comes up short. Tipped out of bounds. Saved back to Young. He lost it. And a foul call. I'm not sure which way this is going. I think it's going to go against Brandon Jenkins. I think you're right. It was hard to pick him out. But again, John, another second chance opportunity for Pittsburgh. And watch it go to the glass. Looks like it looks like Louisville has a chance to get it as the ball's batted back in. But Sam Young catches it and then the foul goes. So Pittsburgh starts another offensive possession with a fresh clock. 320 to go in the half. Panthers work the perimeter. Kendall to field. 
This is Antonio Graves. He gets it back to the freshman. Levon Kendall working on Padgett. Jumper from the baseline. Too strong. Back comes Louisville. McGee with it. Gives it up to Jenkins. Being hounded by Benjamin. And, of course, the faithful thought there should have been two or three fouls on that possession. That'll get them on their feet here at Freedom Hall. Padgett. They look to Jenkins. Palacios turns, shoots, an air ball into the hands of Antonio Graves. Back comes Pitt on the run. Benjamin around Palacios, and then Palacios got him from behind. The first on Juan Palacios. Quick observation, John. I think that for Pittsburgh, with Aaron Gray on the bench, they've not had very many low post opportunities working against this 2 3 zone. What they've gotten has been off of the offensive glass, but in that situation, they created something on the low post on the run out by using the fast break to beat Louisville down court. That got them to the glass. Well, we'll see if they can continue that because it would appear that Krauser and Gray are going to sit for the rest of the half, and he misses the front end. I think all the time that Ramon and Fields have played prior to today, are coming into are becoming a factor in this afternoon's contest because now you can sit Krauser, you can sit Gray because he thinks the kids are all right. One of two at the free throw line for Benjamin, and once again, it's a one point ball game with 225 to go in the first half. And the three point shooting has not been kind. Both those three pointers belong to Fields, and the Cardinals with six three pointers. What a great move inside, just couldn't quite finish the shot, it goes out of bounds. And it'll stay at this end. Cardinals will keep it with 210 to play in the half. And a sub coming into the line. Brad Giannini will check in. And to the bench goes McGee. Giannini's a former walk-on has earned a scholarship. Got his first start as a Louisville Cardinal earlier this year. A crowd favorite here at Freedom Hall. Padgett has an advantage against Kendall and then throws it. To the photographers now there's a time to be a little more selfish and i think that david padgett has to recognize that right now with the matchup with levon kendall anytime he has in a low block and he can clear some space i would imagine his coach rick patino wants him to work inside one-on-one -on -one in that situation well those 10 turnovers now total in the first half of the cardinals have helped keep the panthers in this basketball game benjamin with a move down the lane gives it up to graves he dances down the lane comes up well short panthers Get the rebound and a foul. It was Young trying to go up for the putback. Yeah, this is old fashioned. John, you and Biggie's I both know a little bit about basketball. hockey. Remember the movie Slap Shot where they talk about playing old time hockey? This is old time Big East basketball. Physical, lots of bodies flying, guys meeting each other at the rim. And right now, Pittsburgh benefiting. You're right. That's the way that the Big East built its reputation, you know, Charles, years ago as a physical, physical basketball league. Yeah, while well, other conferences were out doing the jitterbug, the Pitt got, you know, the Big East conference much more of a bump and grind deal. Two at the line for the freshman Young. He has six points, and the Panthers have their first lead since they scored the first three points of the game. Louisville with a couple of eight-point leads, and that one has blocked a foul called on Kendall. That'll be his second foul. So DeGroat, Kendall, Gray, and Krauser each with two fouls. It'll be a three-point, I mean a three-three-shot foul because Jenkins was behind the line. See him set up, Kendall running at him. Gets his hands right at the end of it. And I think that Jamie Dixon's saying, you know something? When he completes the motion, we don't usually call that. Of course, that's what he's going to say in front of his bench. Rick Pitino, of course, thinks that's an excellent call. Jenkins, a junior from Detroit, a 70% shooter. He's still got two more to go. And Tom Lopes keeping an eye on that pit bench. He had a rather heated conversation a little bit earlier with Jamie Dixon. Coming up on our Nissan Halftime Report, we have a lot of activity scheduled for you. We'll check out the Big East Wire. It's been another busy and exciting weekend of Big East basketball. We'll update the standings. Of course, we'll have the highlights and stats. All of that coming up 
on the Nissan Halftime Report, a minute and a half away. So Jenkins with two of the three. He's got five points. And Chris Curran has checked into the lineup. For Louisville, a junior from Frankfurt, Kentucky. Boy, makeshift lineups both ways, Charles. Right now, what he's looking for is just some energy and trying to get to the half without any of his other guys getting into any type of foul trouble. But of course, you also remember Taekwon Dean has the bad ankle. Pulling up for the jumper, rimming out. Got a good look that time to Graves. This is Giannini. Millard. Final minute of the opening half. And hitting the deck hard over there on the far side. I think that's going to go on number 11. That'll be the first personal foul. The current ripped him to the court, and the Panthers get a chance in the final 50 seconds to take the lead before halftime. We'll see. Still plenty of time in this opening 20 minutes of Big East basketball from Freedom Hall in Louisville. Graves inside. Young draws a crowd, has it knocked away, gets it back. Shot clock at 10. Now watch Fields go to work with six on the shot clock. Out of bounds, three on the shot clock. Pretty good defensive set, and that gets the folks to their feet here at Freedom Hall. And going to be very difficult for Pitt to run any type of a full set here. Look for something on a quick pass and on the perimeter. And one second on the shot clock. So they didn't, they lost two seconds. Now it's just a catch and a shot to try and get something off before the shot clock goes off. So the Cardinals will get one final possession in this opening half. Hits the back of the iron. There's a rebound and a block by Padgett. Benjamin went back up with a follow and Padgett batted it away. What a terrific play by David Padgett. Saved them from a second chance hoop going against them. Giannini with it. Millard. Baseline fadeaway, bending off Graves. Held ball, that's going to end the half. It's been a slugfest so far here in Louisville, Kentucky. But the Cardinals will head to the locker room with a lead. They had the lead most of the first half. Until the end, the Panthers did strike back and briefly had the lead. Very unhappy Jamie Dixon heading to the locker room. His team is down a point here at Freedom Hall. And Charles is standing by with Rick Patino. Charles. Coach, first half, the three ball was working real well. Your defense was playing pro real well. How do you keep them off the oh, boards? We got to play football also. If this is going to be football, we got to play them. You can't back down and let them climb our backs. Referees are being fair to both teams. Let them play aggressive. We got to get after it, too. We got to play that way. If they call it tight, we got to play tight. We're backing down from that. We got to play that way. That's Big East basketball. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. John, back to you. All right, Charles. Thank you very much. I think he's just a little bit fired up, isn't he? He's not going to back down. We'll find out what happens in the second half. He certainly remembers those days when he was the coach at Providence in the Big East. Panthers trying to do the job inside, and they have managed to climb from an eight-point deficit to a one-point deficit. Nissan Halftime Report is coming up from Louisville. <laughs> oh, that's a keeper. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Screensaver. Wait, you got to see this one. Oh. Oh. Look at him standing on his hind legs, ready to pounce. Who knew woodchucks would attack like that? It's like a brown furry missile coming right at you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell better stories. Your 270 horsepower, seven passenger Nissan Pathfinder. <laughs> Woodchuck. <laughs> What's better than our biggest, most irresistible jumbo shrimp? Choosing two of your favorites. During Jumbo Shrimp at Red Lobster, choose your two favorites from five tempting jumbo shrimp dishes. Like tender jumbo scampi, hand-breaded crunch fried, or try our new decadent lobster and crab stuffed shrimp. Choose your two favorites. Only during Jumbo Shrimp, only at Red Lobster. 
great devotion to a single purpose. That defines a team. Those who stumble but still find the will to rise up. Risking pain for the chance to stand out from the crowd. And having tasted both victory and defeat, steadily raise expectation. The NCAA Championships on ESPN. Swings it out, Anderson, down low, boom, dunks, what a pass! McGee brings a double team and steals it for Thomas. The Dean, a three, good! Out to Krauser, three-pointer is good! It's showtime at the peak! Right in the lane, back to McNamara, three on the way, right side, book it! And Foy, down the lane, pulls up off the glass, and good from eight feet right in the lane! Yeah, they can't stop it. Here's J.D. driving, kicking it right corner, Herbert for a three, yeah. yes! No other weekly financial publication moves the markets like the tips the night. Got the big four, and he's very ranked in the 20 vote this year. League history, seven conference teams are ranked in the top 25. Three of them are ranked in the top 10 this week, so it's been a terrific start. And you look at Villanova, Charles, they lost a tough one to Texas, but they're one of the best in the country. It, because they play so hard, Every time they step on the floor, it doesn't matter that they're running a three or a four guard offense. They rebound, they play with toughness. When you look at UConn, Rudy Gay, obviously the centerpiece of a great ball club. But Marcus Williams is back, and Hilton Armstrong has really stepped up his game. Played so well in their win yesterday against Georgetown, 19 points, six blocks. And the team we're watching here is in the top ten right now. And Taekwon Dean, their leader, has a bad ankle. They're hoping that he gets better in a hurry and it continues to elevate the Cardinals. And for Pittsburgh, Carl Krauser. The return of Carl Krauser this season has really spurred on the Pitt Panthers. Undefeated here in early January. And they've been climbing in the rankings. West Virginia, brilliant shooting performance last night. They'll no doubt move up a little bit. First time since 1967. They had two players with 30 points in a game. Kevin Pitznagel and Mike Ganzi. And Cincinnati ranked number 25 in the AP poll. Eric Hicks, he has done a great job for them. A true glass eater had a triple-double earlier this year. And the Cuse. big, big win for them at Cincinnati the other day. Jerry McNamara starting to get his shooting touch back. So those are the seven teams ranked in the top 25 in the two polls. We have more to come when we come back to Louisville, Kentucky. Continue our coverage of Pittsburgh and the Cardinals of Louisville. We'll check some other scores. Also, the Big East standings when the Nissan Halftime Report continues. Ray basketball on ESPN plus Saturday it starts at noon Eastern 11 Central be sure to check your local listings we've got more to come Palacios part of a three-point barrage for the Cardinals one of the reasons they've got the lead we'll have highlights and stats next along with Charles Davis happy to have you along on this Sunday afternoon and if you like physical basketball we've got it for you right here let's show you some of the highlights of the first half and it was some freshmen helping Pittsburgh stay in this ball game in the first half well they've counted on them since day one of practice here in October to start this season and they played very well Levance Fields in the first half the leading score for Pittsburgh eight points one triple there for him and David Padgett you talk about physical play in the Big East but we just saw an example. David Patch had four rebounds for Louisville in the first half. Carl Krauser, great spotting of Sam Young leading the run out. He throws it down. Great place for Pittsburgh and for Louisville. Taekwon Dean, their on-the-court leader, their senior co-captain, has struggled with an ankle injury. Did the best he could in the first half. Had an assist. So other people had to pick up the slack. Terrence Williams has the first of his two threes. Andre McGee, one triple in the first half. And once again, Juan Palacios from the low block, he finds Terrence Williams again. Williams, seven points in the first half for Louisville, and the Cardinals six for six from the bonus fear. And that is the big difference in the game. What will happen in the second half? How much will we see of Krauser and Gray? We're about to find out. We'll be back after this.
problem water can be pretty embarrassing, like splashing. Tom Lopes, the referee, came over and said to us <laughs> a minute ago, yeah, that's Big East basketball. That's Big East basketball. All I know is that at the half, everyone got retaped. I'm really surprised we don't have tape fists to start the second half with these two ball clubs. Let us see how fired up they are as Palacios, Williams, Padgett, Jenkins, McGee, the same five, will go. And the Panthers also back to their original starting lineup. DeGroat, Kendall, Dre, Ramon, and Krauser. Padgett with a jump over. <laughs> See, I want to see how intense Louisville is to start this second half because I have a feeling after talking with Coach Patino at the half that he really jumped on his ball club when he went into the locker room. I want to see what intensity they come out with. Well, they're, they're extending that defense. Almost came up with a steal and now a foul. Oh, timeout. Yeah. Uh, Carl Krauser took the time now. Senior leader recognizing how much trouble they were having getting into their offense took a quick timeout. So Padgett getting the job done inside early on in the second half with a little jump hook. Three-point lead for the Cards. I've just invented Guinness Draft in a bottle. Brilliant! I've also invented the scented oil diffuser. Scented oil? <laughs> Ooh! Ah! A bear trap? Brilliant! Ah! Ah! A portable toilet? Brilliant! The spoon, brilliant. Ouch. From our bloopers, go to Guinness.com. Please drink responsibly. If you're looking for answers from an auto parts store, get ready. Advance Auto Parts is working harder to help you save money by doing it yourself. Get ready for certified experts who are ready to help. Get ready for answers on any project you can easily understand. Get ready for in-depth information from Advance TV, our exclusive in-store how-to network. Get ready to go from no way to know-how. For all the advice you'll ever need, the first place to go is Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. No one wins this race alone. Only a skilled, finely tuned team can stay on course. No matter what the conditions. We put the right people on your side to help you meet your financial objectives. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. Carefully consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call your advisor for a prospectus with this and other fund information. Read it carefully before investing. One car was ranked most appealing entry midsize by J.D. Power and Associates and earned Strategic Vision's Total Quality Award. It wasn't a Toyota or Honda. It was the Pontiac G6 sedan. Designed to be one of the best cars in the world. And now, we've created another. The new 240 horsepower G6 Coupe. And the award-winning G6 sedan. Pontiac, designed for action. Well, tonight's Big East Coaches Spotlight is brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Let's take a closer look at the numbers of Coach Rick Pitino of Louisville. He's just been a success every place he's been. And everyone thinks, you know, it, the guy just, you know, everywhere he goes, he just touches the place and, and gold happens. Well, it's a combination of hard work, coaching acumen, and, of course, the personality to bring the type of player to play for him that Rick Pitino's pulled off everywhere he's been. What a success story. Spotlight brought to you by Oppenheimer Funds. Oppenheimer Funds is proud to be the official mutual funds of the Big East Conference and a turnover. McGee with it. Gets it back. Here's Padgett against Gray. Works him down. Jump hook. Comes up short. Gray the rebound. And despite that miss, I think we'll see more of that in the second half. I really feel like the Louisville coaching staff felt that David Padgett was too unselfish in the first half. Pitt is not double teaming him when he gets the ball in the low post. Krauser takes the handoff from Kendall. And Ramon. Krauser for three from straight away. That's off the mark. Tipped up and handled nicely by Terrence Williams. I think there's a noticeable difference in Louisville to start the second half in the way they ended it in terms of intensity. A really good coach Patino jumped on his squad, and they have something to prove to him. Padgett way outside, and he'll give it up now. Backing away is Brandon Jenkins. 15 on the shot clock. Here's McGee. Quick kick, Williams for three. Good. 
That's his third three-pointer, and they have not missed from long range. Seven for seven for the ball game, and Brandon Jenkins almost knocks it free from Ronald Ramon. Don't be surprised if Paul Krauser goes back and handles the ball a little bit more versus the press. And he's got it right now, being covered by McGee. Keeps his dribble, now finds ahead to DeGroat. Now they'll set up in their half-court offense. Two minutes gone in the second half. Cardinals by six. Panthers have not lost this year. Ramon gets inside, has it blocked. DeGroat scrambles for it. Did he get time? He did. Second timeout called by Pitt here to start the second half, trying to keep possession. A lot of possessions left, but right now Pitt feeling, I think, a little bit that every possession is crucial. And they just couldn't get it over Padgett. And see Actually the block got there block by twice. Jenkins. Yeah, Jenkins got it from the side, Padgett from the front. Alert play by DeGroat getting on the floor and getting the basketball. Ordinarily, John, I'm not a big advocate of using up timeouts to keep possessions, but I think Pitt's feeling they're almost in a little bit of a danger zone. The intensity that Louisville's shown to start the second half, they don't want this lead to widen. Now there are only three, and Pitt is one of them. Undefeated teams. Duke at 16, Florida at 16, the Panthers at 13. Yes, Duke won yesterday at Clemson, Florida at home yesterday against Auburn, Pittsburgh. And a nice, nice little scrap today here at Freedom Hall in Louisville. Here's Benjamin quickly into the lineup. Goes baseline, kicks it back to Krauser. Ramon straight away three at the buzzer, got it. First basket for Ramon, a 33% three-point shooter, and that was a huge basket for Pitt. It was after the timeout by DeGroat. Jamie Dixon comes out, runs a nice set, and Ramon delivers. It helps the confidence level of his ball club. Padgett works his way inside and misses the shot. He's missed his last two. But he has been more aggressive looking for that shot in the second half. You notice the first three times he's touched it this half, he's gone to the basket every time. Krauser had it tipped away and decided to lay off and let it go out of bounds, and the officials said it's Panther basketball. Once again, Giannini checks back in for Louisville. Who touched it last? Carl Krauser did. <laughs> I think it batted, I think it, re, it re, uh, rebounded back off of him. Krauser to Gray. And a foul called inside before the shot. Oh, yes. Yeah, Ty Tower's got the call. It is on Giannini. So a new clock, three minutes gone in the second half. Five count there, having a problem with this very aggressive Louisville Cardinal defense in the second half. The ninth turnover of the ball game against the Panthers. And one thing that I'm sure went through Ronald Ramon's head at warp speed was do I take a timeout now as we look at the turnover situation. Louisville having 11 of the Pittsburgh's nine. I think he thought about taking the timeout, then realized they'd already taken two to start the half. Reach in foul on Carl Krauser, number three. So Krauser's in foul trouble early in the second half. 16.50 to play. He had to set quite a bit of the first half. And we'll see how long Jamie Dixon goes with him. I think he's going to count on him being a senior, being smart on the floor, and try and go some minutes with him now. Palacios has it rejected. Kendall comes up with it. Here's Ramon the other way. Panthers have numbers. Benjamin gets inside, throws it up, no good. Palacios starts back for the Cardinals. Hands to Jenkins. Yeah, I think they miss Aaron Gray on the run out a little bit there. Palacios, quick three. Kendall has the rebound. Here comes Krauser. Put his head down, headed into the lane, and was fouled. Jenkins. That's his third, third foul on Jenkins. So we have two players now, both very important to their respective teams with three fouls. Padgett will sit down as Terrence Farley's back in. I expect Padgett to stay down for very long, though. I think they're going to want him on the floor because he gives them so much, not just in scoring. Rebounding defense, passes the ball. Browser took a shot as he got inside, and that is four fouls on Brandon Jenkins. That is a costly foul there. 
And that means Taekwon Dean will come into the game. Bad ankle and all. Brandon Jenkins chasing Krauser. Krauser with the stop. They call Jenkins for smacking him on the arm. Very close to look like look like the game all ball. Kendall with a miss. Gray's put back is blocked. Krauser gets it, puts up a short jumper and hits. So Krauser with his first basket of the game. He and Gray combined have a grand total of four points this afternoon, and it's a one-point game. A little high arcing teardrop runner practice so well by so many little guys in the game nowadays. It's not just one of those prayer shots. They work on it. Williams took turn around and buried it. It's a two. A dozen for Terrence Williams. And he's locked in shooting the ball today, isn't he, John? Yes, he is. Victino said he was a jump shot away from being a first-round draft choice in the NBA. That's why they got him here to Louisville. So it's obvious that he's working on his game. Well, he's four out of six shooting the basketball this afternoon. Inside Gray, around Farley. Fans won't like it, but they're going to send Aaron Gray to the line. And that was a nice quick move by Aaron Gray down low. It's a three-point game, a couple of free throws coming up. Nice spin move. Foul called from behind. Ray Bruce for the news. Thirty-three thirty. The Cardinals hanging on here at home with fifteen twenty-three to play. Let's check out the last foul. Was it a foul or not? Pretty close. Great move by Aaron Gray. Nice and quick. But Terrence Farley right up top. To me, it looks like the block is clean up top. If there's a call there, and there was, I would say it would be body. Farley on Gray. Now Gray's going to get a chance at the free throw line now. He missed both of his opportunities in the first half. Remember, Pitt went into the locker room down one at the half and only two points from Aaron Gray in the first half. And none from Carl Krauser in the first half. So, so if you're Pittsburgh and Jamie Dixon, you have to be heartened by that fact. We're right there, and we haven't gotten our, our top scores on track yet. Emmaus, Pennsylvania, the home of Aaron Gray, one of the most improved players in the Big East Conference. He's got his weight down. Very strong. John, I'd say without hyperbole, one of the most improved in the country. I mean, when you look at the production he's given Pittsburgh and how he's now a guy that people star in their scouting report after not playing much his first two years, that's rapid improvement. Lachos, left control, gets it back. And will go to the line for a three-point play. He was bumped by Kendall. Oh, a very physical move right there. Levon Kendall picks up his third foul. Do we reflect back to Rick Pitino talking to me going to the half about, hey, if we get hit, we're not we're not hitting back. If we get bumped, we have to bump back. This is Big East basketball. Well, Juan Palacios got bumped. He bumps back and forces the foul against Levon Kendall. Levon Kendall saying, uh, verticality? <laughs> Theory of verticality? I'm right there. I didn't make that move. Rebound but by Young, who's checked into the lineup. The aggressiveness of Palacios paid off for him in that play, on that play. The lead is four. Five minutes into the second half. Panthers playing without Carl Krauser. You've got Graves out there. Fields who did a good job in the first half. And it's a quick turnaround inside and a foul called on the Louisville Cardinals. They could go on Williams, yes. And that's three on him. In the 2-3 zone, makes it difficult if Aaron Gray goes into the middle of the lane and he's looking now to do a high low pass with his low post cutter the difficulty will be if that pass is not there because then what does Aaron Gray do is he going to hit the short jumper is he going to put it on the ground put it on the deck and get to the basket that's what he'll have to show if that continues to be an open option for Pittsburgh seventh point for the freshman from Clinton Maryland Padgett back in Farley goes to the bench Young at the line. We have not seen much of starter John DeGroat this afternoon. Sam Young's just coming on 
and the numbers he's given them over the last four ball games he's averaging a double double his last four outings missed that one so just one of two Cardinals on the run loose control of the ball scramble along the baseline gray has it to fields he's got young ahead of the pack young will power down the lane lay it up missed the shot had it and lost it he did everything but finish on yes, the play. Yes, he did, but how you like the aggressiveness of both sides. Palacios taking it down for Louisville. Who loses it? And there's Sam Young trying to get to the basket, unable to finish. Giannini goes to Padgett. That foul is going to go on Graves. It'll be the first on him. Three-point difference. Low-scoring slugfest here this afternoon. And we talk about old-time Big East basketball. We're seeing <laughs> a retro game, aren't we? Yes, we are. Miller checks in. Palacios to the bench. I mean, this is one you would think ESPN Classic would love to have. Long way to go. Three-point difference. Oh. Finally gives it up to Taekwon Dean. Good job by Krauser attacking him, making him put it on. Oh, nice yeah. speed and a foul call. It's going to go on Aaron Gray, I think. And if so, nope, it's not on Aaron Gray. Yes, it is Aaron Gray. Well, that's three on him. He and Krauser each have three. Remember, I mentioned in the first yes. half, we'll see what happens with the foul situation. Biggs is going to check it. Yeah, we're trying to try nurse Gray through some time here. But how about Taekwon Dean? Ankle hurts. He can't get the balance he normally gets. I was praising Krauser for attacking him on defense and forcing him to make a move. And he was able to complete the play and get Miller to the free throw line. That oh, oh. didn't count. <laughs> made it, so let's go on. Let's play. And now Pitt. Somebody's going to take the ball out of bounds. Krauser has it on Taekwon Dean. Finds Biggs. Biggs playing now for Aaron Gray, who's on the bench with three fouls. Young makes a catch in traffic. Biggs from the baseline. Rims out. Dean the rebound. Dean guarded by Graves. They go to Padgett. Matched up against Biggs. Tries to back him down. The jump hook. Bending, bending off. Follow no good. Rebound Biggs. Nice good effort job. by Miller that time. Yes. Going to the offensive glass, even though they didn't convert. That's what Louisville was lacking in the first half. <laughs> Is this physical or what? <laughs> when you love to have had a microphone in the locker rooms of these two teams at the half. Throw it away. Turned it over. Threw it right into the hands of Williams. And then Williams stepped out of bounds. Thought he was pushed. And that's what Rick Dino is telling Tom Lopes on the sidelines. You know, it's, you know it's great for Louisville today. And take a look here. Yep. Right there. Right foot goes out of bounds. What was nice for Louisville is all the injuries we've talked about and all the guys playing hurt. Rick Pitino shuffling up his lineup, getting what he can out of each guy who's injured, getting him out for a break, and then bringing him back. Miller, Dean, turned it over. Good defense. And a great jump stop basket for Terrence Williams. He's got 14 points. He has been super for the Cardinals. Well, they call Tim Duncan the big fundamental. Terrence Williams taking a page from that book. Great fundamental basketball that led to a hoop. And Jamie Dixon has to call another timeout. The Cardinal defense, really the difference in the second half. I really think the intensity level jumped up. Rick Pitino told us going into the half, our guys are not responding the way they should. We're not as physical as we need to be. They've been every bit of that here in the beginning of the second half. Look at that jump stop and goes right over the top of Antonio Graves. That's a freshman who is growing up to be for our eyes, Terrence Williams. We're at Freedom Hall. In Louisville, Kentucky, Big East Conference basketball. The Panthers coming in undefeated at 13-0. Happy to have you along on this Sunday afternoon. I'm John Sanders, along with Charles Davis. And let's document the foul trouble. Well, you pointed it out early, John. How will they play with fouls on their key guys? Carl Krauser, three. Aaron Gray, three for Pittsburgh. 
Those are the key guys for the Panthers. They are on their feet at Freedom Hall. Celebrating the 20th anniversary of their last national championship. Krauser's out there with the three fouls. Penetrates, pulls up. Biggs had a piece of it. And finally, Louisville comes away with it. That's Williams again. Oh, he's having a good ball game. Palacios inside the arc, short. Again, it's loose. Again, they scramble. This is Fields, the freshman. And he lost it, taken away by McGee. Against Young, Young will be charged with a foul, no basket. They look like a couple of linebackers there. <laughs> Strength on strength. Have, look how it starts. Andre McGee reading the crossover from LeVance Fields. Sam Young trying to step up and take the charge. Doesn't get over there far enough. McGee getting to the basket. No hoop, of course, but the foul against Sam Young. Farley back in Padgett to the bench. Turnovers. There's been a turnaround in the turnover category, and it's pretty much even. Louisville just so much more active in their defense. That won't go, and Gray has the rebound. Drops into the hands of Keith Benjamin. Now this is Krauser. Krauser's really not been able to get his one-on-one -on -one game going so far. The 2-3 zone really has limited him. Knocked out of bounds by the quickness of Louisville. And what the 2-3 zone has done, John, in my opinion, is his limited pitch low post game. Now that Aaron was Brian Gray. Harvey who got that yeah. deflection. And Aaron Gray unable to establish in the low block and get what he normally gets. So everything's been perimeter or mid-range jumper for Pitt. Fields from straight away, that's a three. That is his third. Levance Fields has 11. Just a point away from a career high. We wind inside, 12 minutes to go. Four-point ball game. See, and that's the key for Pitt. Right now, Louisville's on a, a little bit of a spurt. Crowds into the game, lots of emotion. It's, they're still only down four. Nice, nice basket by Williams. He's got 16. That matches his career high. Here comes the pressure from Louisville before they fall back into the 2-3 zone. Kendall and Ramon set to return for Pitt. See, where does he go with the ball? He nice underneath. Patience. That's goaltender. So give the basket to Benjamin. And we'll have some subs coming in for the Panthers as we take a timeout. It is a four-point difference in this one. 11.26 to go. Fields with a long-range three. He's been a savior for Pitt. At the other end, it's been Terrence Williams. Big East basketball from ESPN Plus, and this has been a war here in the second half. Right now, the Cardinals have the lead 41 to 37. Look at the post patience there by Aaron Gray at the high post. They took away the first cutter, but he stays with it. And the second cutter gets to the basket. He finds him, the goaltend against Farley. Nice job by Aaron Gray, because that was a question I asked early in the half. He goes into the middle of the lane, and they take away the cutters low. What's he going to do? Is he a shooter? Is he going to put it on the deck and drive it? Or is he going to continue to be a passer? That time, with patience, he found another cutter. But we have not really seen him take that foul line jumper. And if they're yep. going to give it to you, you got to take it, don't you, at some point? And I think that Louisville wants to take away the cutters and force him into that. They'd much rather him taking that, have him take that jumper or put it on the ground and take their chances with that from him. Aaron Gray has only three points in this ballgame. Good feed and a miss of a lay-in that time by Padgett. Yeah, you get him to the green, but you can't putt for him. That's Couldn't true. ask for anything better than that for David Padgett. Krauser is bumped on his way in. That's going to go on McGee. McGee, who had the push up his second foul. He had the big game in the win against Providence College on the road. Had 12 and got the winning basket at the end. And he's done a great job of taking care of the ball all year long. Look at the big at two numbers, scoring. Yeah. That's not something you would expect coming into a ball game with Pittsburgh. But despite that, the Panthers hanging tough. Well, they're only down four. Look at that. 
Yep, I guess we're getting an example of why they're hanging so tough. The bench is coming to play, and they're eating up the offensive glass. Second chance points, they lead 12 to 2. Krause right at the foul line. Fields. He can penetrate. Now they're going to get it back to Krauser. Shot clock at 10. Krauser gets away from trouble. Sets up Ramon for three, and he hit it. Is it physical or what? <laughs> it was not an artistic success, but you'll take three points the hard way anytime if you're Jamie Dixon, the head coach of the Pitt Panthers. Makes it a one-point game. Pageant outside on Gray. Krauser hits the deck again. You talk about physical. And there's Williams again. He has had a career afternoon. He's got 18 points. That's his career best. Taekwon Dean back on the floor, giving them what he can. He recognizes that he's not going to be an offensive threat today. But how about the senior going out there and doing what he can on defense, moving the basketball, and trying to rebound? That's a great example of leadership. Krauser will shoot a three. Yes, his first one of the afternoon. Carl Krauser makes it 43-43. And as I was praising Taekwon Dean, the ankle shows up on that play because he couldn't get back on defense to the spot where Carl Krauser was to look at the three-point field goals in the second half, especially Pitt, four for five. Beginning to even out. Once again, this time it's Williams too strong. Palacios is fouled, and he's fouled by Levon Kendall. That'll be four on Kendall. That's going to bring Sam Young into the ball game. Also returning is Brandon Jenkins, who got the start along with McGee. And Kendall to the bench with four. And that's unfortunate for Pitt because he gave them great minutes in the first half when Gray and Biggs were on the bench. And Kendall moved over from the power forward to the middle. Padgett against Gray. Backs him down. Jump hook off the glass too hard. Back into the hands of Gray. He missed two or three short ones in the second half. Yeah, he's getting great looks. He's just not able to convert. Young got down ahead of the pack but couldn't finish either. So back come the Cardinals. Jump stop. The long shot is up and good. It is a two. 20 points for Terrence Williams. The freshman with his first collegiate 20-point ball game. Well, cliche time, John. He's in the zone. Well, he, he is, is locked in and ready to go. Anytime he touches it, he thinks that he can score. Well, he has stepped up big time here this afternoon. Eight and a half to go. Gray stuffs it off the feed from Young. And I love the adjustment that Jamie Dixon made, moving Sam Young to the high post position, leaving Gray down on the low block where he can get it and finish. Palacios in traffic, throw it away. I'm not sure who he was trying to get the pass to. <laughs> I know the Lady Birds are down on the baseline, but I don't think he wants them to try and score at this point. Let's see if Pitt stays with it. They break the pressure and they go 2-3 zone. Let's see if Sam Young flashes into the post position, leaving Gray down low. Now it's Gray right in the post now. See, I would switch that as much as possible personally, but that's why Jamie, Jamie Dixon is the head coach. He's a lot smarter than I am. Krauser looks to Gray along the baseline, and he banks it home to give the Panthers the lead. See, that's where he does damage. Right down on the low block. And that time, they didn't have to go high-low. They're just able to enter it in from the wing. He had the angle right to the hoop. Jenkins backs away. Over to Williams. Now Palacios is outside. Nice. There's a steal. A lot of Ramon. Palacios will try to track him down. Does. And fouls him. That's number three on Juan Palacios. <laughs> Aaron Gray starting to heat up in the second half of this game. Doing his thing down low to give the Panthers the lead. 7.29 to play on ESPN+. Plus. When Carr was ranked most appealing entry midsize by J.D. Power and Associates and earned Strategic Vision's Total Quality Award, it wasn't a Toyota or Honda. It was the Pontiac G6 sedan. Does it be... Miss Saigon, Fierce Florence Costume, Puzzle. Six, six today. 
somehow the Panthers have a two point lead and it's really tough to figure out how well they've been they've been hanging around the whole game and doing work on the defensive end and on the offensive glass and Ronald Ramon great step out as they tried to do the handoff and then when they didn't have it Juan Palacios tried to throw it over the top but he deflected it away so the good steal sets them up at the other end and get a chance to add to the lead Panthers going with Fields Ramon Krauser Young and Gray. Padgett is out along with Jenkins. Williams has had a terrific ball game this afternoon. Palacio and McGee. Those are the matchups as we start the final seven and a half minutes. Two shots coming up for Ronald Ramon. I really think this two point lead for Pittsburgh had its roots in the first half when they won the offensive rebounding battle nine to three and stayed right with Louisville in their one point game at the half. And that has continued into the second half. Second chance points, eating up the offensive glass, creating the second chance opportunities. The foul trouble, the attrition against Pitt is where the concern is right now for Jamie Dixon. A pair at the line. He's 24 of 28 shooting foul shots. This is the biggest lead that Pitt has had. Remember, they scored the first three points of the game. That foul is going to go on. Ronald Ramon, that is his first. Yeah, they got him for bodying Brandon Jenkins as he tried to make his move through the lane. And we're in the one and one. Jenkins with five, two of three from the foul line. 39 45. Feel the crowd getting a little restless, can't you, John? Yeah. Because they brought the ball up on that possession. But I don't think that it's one, that one, they don't need to be that restless yet. But two, the players can't sense that and feel it and rush themselves into something they don't need to do. It's only a four-point game. Over seven minutes to go. Run your sets. <laughs> you know, keep doing the things you've been doing. Plenty of time left. And stay aggressive at the defensive end. Exactly. Inning. That's been a plus for them in the second half. Now eight for 12 from the free throw line of the Cardinals. Seven points for Jenkins. There's the pressure. Krauser handles. Get it back to Sam Young. He pushes it ahead to Fields. Skip to Krauser. It took 10 seconds off the shot clock. But plenty of time left to get a good shot. 20 seconds on the shot clock now as they wind it down. Normally, when you play pressing teams, you attack the press to score, but Pitt's attacking it to set up. Fields, what a nice look that was for him. He's got 13 points. It is a career high for him. Yeah, they've gone into the half-court game. After they break the pressure of Louisville, they attack the 2-3 zone. They've gotten increased, increasingly better at doing it as this game has gone on. Here's Williams again. Pull up jumper good. He is in the zone for sure. 22 points for him. It has been a career ball game as Ramon handles against the pressure. And he does not mind taking the big shots, does he? Now Young will reset to Krause. Exactly what they did on the last possession. Yeah, you know, as I said, normally when you attack pressure, you attack it to try and score because you don't want them to set up again and come back after you. But Pitt's having a lot of success against this 2-3 zone here in the second half. But now the shot clock's going to become a factor. It's down to 10. Krauser, Gray, looks. Finally goes over the top. Young is there. Got the roll. Wow. That's where athleticism really helps you out because as he threw the pass, I thought to myself, that's a tough pass. If you look at the leading lead, leaders for Louisville, Williams with 22 points. Nice feed from Palacios to Padgett. And for Padgett, that is his first field goal in the second half. It's not from, a, not from a lack of looks, though. He's had opportunities, just hadn't been able to convert. Young into the paint. Krauser for three. Got it. Carl Krauser delivers his second three-pointer. The redshirt senior from the Bronx with eight. It's a five-point lead. Biggest of the afternoon for Pittsburgh. Nice job by Sam Young getting into the lane and delivering it out front for Carl Krauser. Created enough space for Krauser to get the jump shot over the Louisville defender. You know that three-point difference, which was such a factor in the first half, is pretty much evened out now. Yes, it has. Jenkins on Ramon against Gray. Missed the shot. And it was certainly altered by Gray. Yeah, that big seven-foot presence loomed at the end of the play. Made it a very difficult shot. 56-51, Fields against Williams. Look how Louisville's extending now, going back to man-to-man. 
He's talking to Tom Lopes. Hey, I'm far enough away. Take the count off. <laughs> and he finally did. He got his way. Ten on the shot clock. Ramon pulls up for a jump shot. Too strong. Rebound Palacios. Tough shot in that situation. There's more time on the shot clock, maybe, than Ronald Ramon thought. Almost turned over. And the reach-in foul on Carl Krauser. That'll be number four. Carl Krauser with number four. Let's check out our Red Lobster nothing but net shot of the game. Nothing but net when you're up above the rim when you <laughs> jam it down, right? When you can look down at things, that helps. Great pass by Sam Young. And they're exactly right. Nothing but net. No iron at all as Aaron Gray powers it through the basket. We're going to have Antonio Graves checking in for Carl Krauser. Williams to the line. He's one of two there. And Carl Krauser provided a spark playing with the three fouls, and he gets that reach-in foul that sends him back to the bench. We'll see how long he stays there. Well, I think it, it's all dictated on the lead. How long can they go with this type of a lead? If Louisville gets it down and keeps it in that danger zone, which, of course, they're already in. It's only four points now. If Pitt can continue to play with the lead, they'll go as long as they can. Carl Krauser on the bench. With plenty of time. Bending up. Rebound Gray. Loose picked up by Ramon. Good job by Ramon. Hopping on the loose ball. Could have been another opportunity for the Cardinals. Fields matched up against Jenkins. That's been a good battle all afternoon. Look for him to go to Gray here versus the man-to-man. -man. No double so far. Looks for help. Goes back to Ramon. Gets it back again. Shot clock at 11. Gray. Jump hook, bending off a really strong, tipped and controlled by Palacios. Good defense there by Louisville, not letting Gray get as deep as he wanted to on Sandy Austin. Just couldn't control it. <laughs> 16 turnovers this afternoon for the Louisville Cardinals. Let's see if they try and go back to Aaron Gray on the low block again, try and isolate a side for him and get people out of the space. Graves penetrates the baseline, puts it up and in. First basket of the afternoon for Antonio Graves, and it is a big one. They go back to a six-point lead now. The biggest lead that they have had this afternoon. And they did, yeah, and they didn't go to Gray for the basket but they went to his side and used his frame to clear some space. Watch watch Graves, 22. See how Gray sets up on Padgett? It just becomes a screen for him and allows him to get to the basket and make a nice move inside. And of course, Carl Krauser in the second half, all of his eight points have come in the second half, including a couple of huge three-pointers. And you notice how Brandon Jenkins was running at him and he had a little hesitancy at the end? That's because of the four fouls Brandon Jenkins is playing with. Does not want to foul a three-point shooter at that stage and does not want to leave the game. Well, the three-pointers have evened out. Each team has made seven three-pointers. The Panthers have taken more shots than the Cardinals, but you see what he did in the first half? Nothing. He's on the bench right now with four. The second half has been the charm, and we've seen good leadership from both senior guards. Taekwon Dean for Louisville. Knew he couldn't provide much offense, but gave him what he could. And Carl Krauser not letting a scoreless first half bring the rest of his production. Williams again oh. drew the foul. Foul is on Antonio Graves. He hit a big basket at the other end to give Pitt a six-point lead. Hard. I've been kicking it right corner, Hair Bear for a three. Yes! yes. Know why I'm senior member of the stunt crew? Today's Big East game has been brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Red Lobster, choose two of your favorite jumbo shrimp dishes now at Red Lobster. Oppenheimer Funds, the right way to invest. And by Cooper Tires, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Capacity here is 18,865, is that correct? We have 19,947 here. Fire marshal doesn't work when Pittsburgh <laughs> comes to town. Apparently not.
you get the day off. There's some folks are standing around up there. <laughs> All right, we're going to put Williams to line. What an afternoon he has had. He'll have two shots coming up. Looking for his 24th point and gets it. By the way, let's take a look at our defensive player of the game. Brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. And this is the guy. He's done it at both ends this afternoon. Two at the line for him. A 25-point ball game. Carl Krauser is back out for the final three minutes. He knows Pittsburgh's going with three ball handlers now. Levance Fields, number two, Ronald Ramon, number four, and Carl Krauser, number 11. They lead by four. This is Fields. Ramon, again, they go inside and a reach around foul on Padgett. That's the first foul this afternoon from the transfer from Kansas. And if Padgett does not foul on that play, Louisville has a steal because Palacios was coming from the weak side. Watch the entry. There's the foul, but see Palacios coming from inside out creates the steal. Louisville would have had possession of the ball. It's a one and one for Gray. Rattles out. He is only one of five from the foul line this afternoon, and that's been costly, especially right there in the closing few minutes. Two and a half to go. This has been some kind of basketball game. Williams fouled by Ramon. No shot. Number two on Ronald. Nice move by Williams utilizing his body and his strength to get ahead of Ramon and catch the basketball and not allow Ramon to body him off of his move. Double bonus too. The tenth foul. Short with the first, he has made four of seven. He has had a career game with 25 points. But it's still pit by four, still by four. Rebound by Krauser. So Williams misses two. And a traveling violation on Krauser. Tried to step through a double team, couldn't do it. In one of his moves that, you, that you've watched this whole ball game, the 13th turnover against Pittsburgh today. And the discussion going on. Might have a cut again on Carl Krauser's hand. I think that's what it is. Ed Hightower is in the middle of this. And Jamie Dixon saying, how can you call travel? My guy's bleeding. <laughs> I mean, that, he said, I can't ask for any more proof than that. See, crowds are going through. They're saying travel because of the, the move that he had made and didn't get the ball back on the, back on the floor. Instead, he comes up with a bloody hand to turn over against Pittsburgh, and Jamie Dixon saying, you've got to be kidding. So coming in to replace Krauser is Graves. And Tom Lopes trying to break up a huddle in front of Rick Pitino. And Pittsburgh's down to one timeout left for the ball game with 2.16 to go. Cardinals still have two remaining. What do you think? They're going through the double team, hard for the officials because, let's face it, how many slaps and, and holds have we seen all game? Now, Krauser, of course, comes up bloody, but officials can't read everything. <laughs> Magic way outside. Well, if they called everything, we'd be here for four hours. Plus, you see, if that were hockey, John, that's all I'd back five minutes, right? Because of the blood. <laughs> it's true. Unfortunately, it's basketball for Pitt. Jenkins down the lane. Bending off, tipped up, and there's Gray corralling the rebound. Really coming to life in the second half. Aaron Gray has a big physical rebound. Padgett trying to follow the missed shot. Still a four-point lead for Pitt. We're in the final minute and a half. Look for Gray. Panthers looking for their 14th win in a row. Here's Gray. Not doubled. Gets into the lane. Looks outside. Fields. Well, thought about three. Quickly. Puts it to the four. Keeps his dribble. Shot clock. They're going to have to fire it up at the buzzer. Rims out. He almost made it underneath the foul on Padgett. Unbelievable for Pittsburgh. You could not have drawn up a worse offensive possession for the Panthers that's going to turn out positive for them. 
With a minute 15 to go, it was a desperation shot to beat the clock. And look where Gray is. Look at that position he's got underneath. All the way underneath. Normally, that's bad positioning, but the ball fell perfectly for him. Because the see how the ball doesn't really spring off? What do you normally get on three-point shots? Long John? rebounds. Long rebound. Didn't get it that time. It fell off perfectly for Aaron Gray, who had position on Padgett. And Pitt gets another opportunity. Here comes Carl Krauser. Aaron Gray has been a disaster at the line. He's one for six. That was much better. So eight points for the junior from Emmaus PA. And Taekwon Dean is going to come in for the final 115. That senior leadership out there. And Jamie Dixon's wondering why he's allowed to come into the game. Because what he said was the ball was inbounded. The clock shit was inadvertent coming in on the horn. He should still have to sit out of possession. But he's not going to argue it too fiercely at this point. Five-point lead for Pitt. Two possession game. Dean working on Krauser. And again, if you're Carl Krauser, four fouls keeps you from attacking too much. But make Taekwon Dean handle the ball on the bad ankle. He's going to shoot a long three and he hits it. Taekwon Dean. That might be his first shot of the afternoon. I believe it is. And he's defeated almost all odds today playing with the bad ankle. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh takes its last timeout. It is a two-point game thanks to a gutsy three-point shot from long range by Taekwon Dean. How about that? He has broken every rule that you have, John, as an opposing coach. When a star or any player is out there limping around and is hurt, you try and attack him in every, at every opportunity to force him to move, force him to make plays. And Taekwon Dean has done just enough today to stay on the court and down the stretch he hits a monster shot that was his first shot of the game how about that comes in the final minute makes it a two-point game and this coming from a player john in his last eight games 26 percent from behind the arc as so i read a comment from him once he said if i miss a thousand shots i'm still taking 1,000 and first because i know it's going in. well you got to have that shooter's, shooter's confidence mentality. yeah but let's see what's going to happen here in the closing 53.3. Panthers have a lead of two. They're out of timeouts. Two timeouts remaining for the Cardinals. And that's the key one for Jamie Dixon in his huddle. Remember, gentlemen, we don't have a timeout. So if you're in trouble, <laughs> you'd better not be in trouble inbounding the ball because you can't go to the timeout to bail us out. Three ball handlers again on the floor for Pittsburgh and Fields, Krauser, and Ramon. Krauser back on. He's heavily taped on his left wrist area. And he's going to take the pass, work on Jenkins. They're going to try and double, make him give up the basketball. They want other people to handle it, not Krauser. Ramon had it, lost it. Out of bounds. It's Pitt basketball, and again, Jamie Dixon is all over the officials. So close there, Palacios knocking it free, almost creating the turnover. Pittsburgh with 21 on the shot clock. I'm sure they want the ball in the hands of Krauser, number 11, to initiate offense. 43 seconds left in the game. Krauser out in front, working on Jenkins. Fields, Kendall for three, rattled out, rebound Williams. 30 seconds to go. Shot clock is off. I don't think he'll think timeout in this situation. He'll want to run against the defense already out. Padgett underneath, kicks it to the corner. Palacios for three, no good. McGee tracks it down. The Cardinals get it back. Palacios again for three, that's no good. Rebound Padgett, and a foul goes on Louisville. With 11.6 to play. Krauser is down on the court, and we're going to go the other way. who the foul was on look at the ball movement by Louisville two nice looks Palacios from straight away misses McGee tracks it down 
But watch inside on the jump shot. Paget number four going to the basket, but it wasn't him. Looked like Terrence Williams, number yeah. one, pushing Krauser in the back down on the low block. His fourth foul of the ball game. So Krauser at the line for two. 11.6 to play. Not close. So even if he makes this one, it's a one possession game. Exactly. And, and the Panthers at the free throw line, 12 of 21. If there's one thing Louisville does well, shoots the three ball. So if Pitt makes it here, look for them to pick up full court and try and take some time out of the clock. Browser missed them both. A two-point game. Giannini in the final 10 seconds on the run. Gives it up to Dean. Three-point shot. No good. Gray the rebound, and he's fouled. With 2.1 to play. And Taekwon Dean all the way down at the other end. He had a good look. He did. And he had made the previous one. No hesitation at all going to the senior to try and knock it down there. Rick Pitino not going with the timeout which I think is always good strategy. I'd much rather work against the team trying to set up on defense than give them the chance to set up on defense. As you mentioned, John, had the look, just unable to convert. Let's take a look now at our Pontiac game-changing performance. It is brought to you by Pontiac. And it could have changed it. It could have changed everything for Louisville if Taekwon Dean had made that three. Aaron Gray gets the roll, just his third in eight attempts at the foul line, and they're hanging on on that pit bench looking for their 14th victory in a row. Almost from straight away, leaning a little bit left. He had it dead on, just unable to drop it through. This is the big one, though. If Gray makes this one, it's a four-point game and a two-possession game with only 2.1 left. And finally, his foul shooting comes alive. He puts nine on the board. He's only made three, excuse me, four of nine from the free throw line, but those two were big ones. Crucial right there to make it a four-point a four game instead of a three. Louisville still had a fighting chance to come down and drain a triple and send it to overtime. Now with 2.1 left, Pittsburgh's feeling real good about their chances. Well, eight three-pointers now for Louisville, but the big difference was the turnaround for the Panthers in the second half. They hit their threes in the second half, and somehow, as you said when you came back at halftime, you said, want to see the intensity of Louisville. It was really tough. They built the lead in the second half, got it up to seven, playing outstanding defense, and then all of a sudden, it came working their way back into the game. I think it was, think it was the intensity of Louisville versus the resilience of Pittsburgh and look at what they've got still chasing the best start in school history at 21 and 0 going back to 1927 28 but they can go to 14 and 0 right here that was a team that did not lose a game with the buzzer and the Panthers are going to sneak out of here with a victory 61 to 57 it was a physical battle from start to finish and somehow the Panthers had the presence of mind and the ability to get the job done Gray finished it off at the foul line but he was huge with his rebounds coming down the stretch so tough-minded was Jamie Dixon's Pittsburgh team never daunted by the fact they played from behind for most of this ball game and their stars Carl Krauser Aaron Gray to combine two points in the first half. They bounced back in the second half and led them to victory. They sure did. And so the Panthers do pull it off. It is the second loss at home this year for the Cardinals. They fell to Villanova in their first home game. Not much scoring either way as this one winds up 61 to 57. Leading the way for Pittsburgh was Levance Fields with 13. Of course, Terrence Williams had a career game. He had 25 points this afternoon. But that is it from Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. Our final score, Pittsburgh 61, the University of Louisville 57. A reminder, next Saturday, Big East action on ESPN Plus, number 11 pit, St. John's, noon Eastern. Check your local listings. For Charles Davis, I'm John Sanders. Thanks for watching a presentation of ESPN Plus, worldwide leader in collegiate sports. Some days I need to bring work home with me. You know, paperwork, reading, catching up. But it was just impossible. It was obvious. We needed a smarter way to use our space. We made the call for the...